Live from the Austin Convention Center in Austin, Texas, it's The Cube at Dell World 2014. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Austin, Texas, everybody. You're watching The Cube. We're about two miles from where it all started, and Michael Dell, it is our pleasure to have you back in The Cube. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, glad to be with you. So it's been an amazing transformation. I got to say, two things strike me is, one, is you're taking the company private. It, it couldn't have been time better. Like you said, all the headlines were dead wrong. <laughs> uh, and the second is, you actually beat the great icon at his own game. So congratulations on both of those. That Thank doesn't you. happen a lot. Thank you. So talk about being private and what it means. I know you've, you've written a lot about it. You were on CNBC with the, the circus clowns yesterday. You were very nice to those guys. I know you weren't calling them <laughs> circus clowns. But, but it's been all, all the news. You've been very vocal about it. Uh, but tell our audience you know, what it means to be private. Well, you know, a year ago when we completed the privatization, we had an event inside the company. And we were playing loud rock and roll music and we had chains unleashed and we just told our teams, we're going for it, right? We're going to invest, we're going to grow, we're going to go, you know, take over the enterprise, the data center, we're going after security and software, and we're going to grow our share. And we've invested in the business and it's, it's working. And, and you know, we've unleashed a kind of passion and energy uh, among our teams. And here at Dell World, we're showing off, you know, the, 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 the inventions and the innovation uh, that we've been able to create just in the last year. And it's resonating unbelievably well with our customers, the partner community. Uh, we've got mo incredible momentum in the business and growing all across the, the, the world in every single business. And so it's a lot of fun. You know, not, not managing with the 90 day shot clock. And so being in control of our own destiny and, and having all these you know, wonderful customers giving us, giving us great uh, feedback, it's, 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 it's all good. Well you talked about, you wrote about and talked about the, the plague of short term thinking uh, in, in our markets. Uh, and they were asking you yesterday on CNBC, do you think that, that can change? Do you, think it, do you think it should change? I mean, US companies have done very well with that short term thinking, but I feel like there's all these things happening in the business. People are splitting up, people are selling their businesses, people are paying people to take businesses, um, and it's all due to this financial pressure. Um, what's happening? You know, I think any anything taken to an extreme can, can be bad, right? Whether it's shareholder activism mm -hmm. or anything else, uh, but it's, it's, not, it's not always bad. But you kind of have to step back and think about, first of all, what is the purpose of an, of an enterprise Right, over a long period of time, and who does the enterprise serve? Okay, and so when 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 I look at uh, the things that are going on, I kind of ask myself two questions. First, is this really good for the customers of the business itself? Okay, uh, and, and and if it's not, that, that ought to raise some questions. Second question that, that you know, I ask is, okay, if the principals own the entire business. Is this something they would be doing? Or are they doing it because there's a, a short-term influence in a particular period of time? And you know that, that, that may not lead to the best outcomes over a long period of time. And, and so that, it's just a different perspective. So John Furrier couldn't be here, he sends his best, and so I was talking to John beforehand, so what should I ask Michael? He said, okay, here's the deal. <laughs> ask Michael this. Like I said, we're two miles from the dorm room. You're 18 years old again, it's 2014. What do you got cooking? You know, I think um, uh, definitely starting a business, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you got uh, kind of a big dorm room here, Michael. <laughs> this is pretty good. <laughs> uh, well, you know, here, here we, we, we got the world's largest startup. So, yeah. so the, the great thing is we have, we have capital and intellectual property and customers and, and momentum. So, uh, you know, we're doing it all over again. Um, but look, we're in an incredible time where there's just uh, an amazing uh, set of possibilities around the impact technology can have in, in, in our world. You look at what's going on in what we call the data economy, as sensors are you know, out there and instrumenting everything. The cost of silicon keeps coming down and companies, organizations are rethinking what they do with all that information. 
You look at uh, what's going on in, in biotech and being able to uh, now unlock a lot of the mysteries of, 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 of uh, health and, and, and science uh, with all this computing power. So there, there's just a ton of opportunities. We got plenty on our plate you know, as Dell, and we're growing nicely, um, and, and, and we'll continue to, to invest. Stu, I know you're dying to jump in. If I don't let you, you'll never get a yeah. word in, so go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. So, so Michael, you talk about being the world's largest startup in innovation. What, what I want to understand is inside the company, you know, have you made or is there a plan to kind of change things inside? Because obviously you don't have to answer to Wall Street now and that does change yourself and we, we've talked to some of your general managers as to how that trickled down. But you know, when, when, when you look at big companies, you know, big companies typically don't create a lot of the new innovations. It's the small little startups, uh, you know, just large organizations, organizational size is usually the antithesis of allowing me to move fast and nimble. So what, what are you doing to inside to kind of change and in, in, in incent that innovation? Well, you know, we, we have a number of startups within Dell and we keep starting up new businesses. I think at the core of your question is the acceptance of risk. And you have to re-inject the acceptance of risk Absolutely. in the business. And if you're managing with a 90 day shot clock, you don't take a lot of risk, right? Because you want to meet that guidance. And so that's all gone, right? We, we, we are accepting risk and we are placing bets across the business. As Tom Sweet, our CFO and I travel around the business, we you know, hand out more money to, 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 go, to go take risks <laughs> and go invest in the business. And not all of them will work, that's fine. But they're mostly working and you know, the business is doing, doing just fine. Uh, we also have Dell Ventures, and you know we're continuing to invest in interesting startups that are doing great things out there. You're right, uh, you know that, that, that over time has a, has a better record than large companies. Uh, but Dell itself has a, has a record of expanding organically and with acquisitions into new spaces, and we built you know some pretty impressive uh, businesses in in the enterprise in software and security and services both with a, a foundation of acquisitions and uh, continuing organic investment. Yeah, so you, you've done very well with acquisitions. I wanted to ask you a question on the record here because when, when you went private, some of your competitors said to me, oh, Dell's in big trouble now, they're not going to be able to make acquisitions because they paid for it with their free cash flow and now they won't be able to do that because they're paying off debt. I said, well, wait a minute. I started to squint through the numbers. I said, Dell throws off enough free cash flow and now that it doesn't have to pay dividends, and, and do shareholder or stock buybacks, it's going to be able to continue to fund acquisitions. Can you clear that, that up for us? Yeah, so if, if you look at it from, just from the cost of what did we spend in dividends, what did we spend in share repurchase, and what did we spend in interest expense, it actually costs a lot, lot, lot less to be a private company than it, than it costs to be a public company. And so we actually have more capital. So we'll continue to make acquisitions but I think the, the important thing is not just make the acquisitions, it's how do you make them successful? Right. How do you buy a company that has 6,000 customers and over a period of you know few years, get it to 150,000 customers? Mm -hmm. And we've been able to do that actually repeatedly with the kind of acquisitions that we've targeted. Yeah, I mean, you're clearly one of the top acquirers of companies. I was doing some research. I would say in the last nine months, you probably know this, but you've probably done 50 launches, at least. <laughs> I wonder which ones, maybe pick two or three that excite you the most, maybe there were some yesterday. Share with our audience. Well, you'd have to say the 13th generation Power Edge. I mean, there, yeah. there, no, no question that that is, that is the core of the core of the data center. And we're big believers in software defined and software based uh, networking and storage. And we've seen this trend for some time where because of virtualization and cloud-based models, workloads are moving into the compute layer. And you look at the R730XD as an example of this, a 2U server, 36 microprocessor cores, up to 1.5 terabytes of DDR4 DRAM, four 40 gig ports, 100 terabytes of storage, all on a 2U platform, just amazing performance. You know, that, that kind of uh, data center uh, is clearly, clearly an important one for us. Yeah, at a price point that brings that kind of technology and, down and to we're, the masses, And we're right? gaining share. You know, I think you saw uh, in terabyte ship, some people like to talk about revenue, that's all fine. 
revenue is great. We we got we got revenues too, and the revenues are growing. Trust me, okay. But in a in a world where the bit, the game is changing, right? Where the network is becoming software defined, the storage is becoming software defined. Yeah, look at the whole thing. Internal storage, external storage, combine it all together, we're number one, we're growing, other guys are shrinking. And look at what we talked about on stage uh, just yesterday with you know, our new PS4210, igniting the whole Ecologic install base, six times performance improvement from the prior generation with a starting price of $15,000 an all flash array, uh, under $25,000, the lowest entry price. And then, you know, this XA90 DCS server, 720 terabytes in a 4U platform. So whether it's software defined, uh, all flash, uh, you know, we are, we are really setting the pace for the data center of the future. Well, and you're now the only, and once HP splits up, you'll be the only end-to-end -end supplier on the planet. And I, I think I think if you're going to be end to end, you have to have both ends, right? Yeah. Or, or else it's the end. Who would have predicted that? Right? <laughs> so you obviously, Dell made a made a name in in direct. The cloud appears to be the new direct model. So how do you stay relevant in in cloud? I think there are, you know, certainly lots of uh, you know interesting growth vectors around cloud. Mm. What we see primarily from the enterprise customers is the, the, the growth of the private cloud. And you know, if, if you think about uh, what's going on in the world, software is really uh, advancing rapidly. And when I look at the public cloud, if you think about the public cloud as kind of perfect efficiency, the private cloud's getting better and better, okay? So we saw Evo Rail, we saw the Microsoft Cloud Platform System, we've seen what Red Hat is doing with OpenStack. And by, by uh, building these hyper-converged systems, we're able to now give the customer the efficiency of the public cloud with the privacy and security of the private cloud. And uh, we certainly have you know, tools to help customers manage whatever cloud platform they, they may want to have, but we think, we think the answer, there isn't just one answer here. And we're seeing tremendous growth in private clouds. Uh, and of course, you know, we've got the hardware, the software, the services to help make that happen. Well, your competitors must be seeing that growth too, but unlike your competitors, you don't feel compelled to own <clears throat> your own data centers globally and start selling services you know, directly. We're, we're in not the cloud. competing with the public cloud partners. We provide them a lot of infrastructure. We have this great marketplace. So our, our you know, the, you got 600 telcos out there, all getting in the cloud space. You have all the, you know, well-known companies getting in the cloud space. Those are our customers. And, you know, as, as, as uh, you know, lots of customers want to go to the public cloud, we'll help them go there. They want a private cloud, we'll help them go there too. Then you got to manage this whole federated world of public and private, we'll help them do that as well. I, I was struck two nights ago when I got here, walking the show, networking, flash, converged, I had to write it down, Oracle <laughs> systems, flash, cloud, OpenStack, VMware, Docker, NFB, IOT, big data, hyperscale, services, security, system management. What'd you expect? And I'm just, <laughs> I'm just scratching the surface here, right? Beneath these, you've got, you know, unbelievable portfolio that you've, you've amassed. Um, you know, you're, Colleague Joe Tucci says it's better to have overlap than it is to have gaps. Do you agree with that sort of scenario? I think in the software-defined world, you know, you've got to give customers choice. And you know, you think about the major providers today, like Microsoft, VMware, Red Hat. Certainly, we work very closely with all three. We can't just pick one, right? You know, we 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 pick them all, right? And 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 customers decide. So we're big believers in choice. Yeah. So. We're getting the hooks shortly, but I have to say again, you know, having the founder uh, at the company, John and I have always talked about you and your leadership and, and how great that is. We say, we say the same thing about Larry Ellison. I mentioned Joe Tucci. Somebody in the crowd asked me, ask Michael, what would you do if you were Joe Tucci and Elliott Management had, your, had you in a headlock? <laughs> now, his name's not Egan, right? He's done a lot. Oh, what would you do if you were Joe Tucci? 
Well, you know, uh, I've talked to Joe a little bit about that, and I'll keep my conversation Great. with Fair him enough. private. So, so. He's, he's sought advice. We'll leave it there. <laughs> and, uh, Michael, congratulations on everything. As I said, Stu and I and, and John and the CUBE team are just honored to be here to, to document this. We'll be watching. We think it's going to be one of the greatest moves in the history of the business. And we talk about the VMware acquisition all the time. We think actually you could create more value, which is a lot. So. Uh, well done, congratulations, Thank and you. thanks very much for coming on. Thank Always you. Always a pleasure. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with Thank our next you. guest right after this.